Well, good morning, Change Point family, and welcome to church this morning. It's so good to have you here with us. And um, I'm shooting here in location at home uh, in a secluded part of our garden. And it's always good to be out in the whenua and the land. And, and I'm enjoying the, the weather and the breeze. And uh, I hope you are all getting out and about as much as you can in this time. And uh, even though we're in lockdown and isolation, uh, it's so important that we stay connected with each other. And so I just want to encourage you from uh, a scripture from Romans chapter 12. Uh, verse 5 and it says so it is with Christ's body we are many parts of one body and we all belong to each other and I just wanted to highlight this morning um, before we go into the worship uh, with uh, Chris and Michelle for, uh, at their home uh, and then Pastor Lynn is going to bring us the word it is so important in this time that we stay connected that we stay connected with God that we take time each day to pray, to, to read a word, to get, in the, get into the Bible, get in, study, find, find an area that you, you want to know, or grow more in God and, and spend some time with Him. Listen, open your taringas, turn your taringas on your ears and spend some time in a quiet place with God. Stay connected with God at all costs. Stay connected with His body. There, even though the sheep were all, were a little bit scattered at the moment, um, it's so important more than ever that we stay connected. And so reach out, reach out to someone, reach out to someone you know who, who needs help. Um, and, and the best thing we can do for each other is pray, uh, encourage each other, or just check up on each other and say, hey, how are you going? How are you finding it with the kids? Have you ran out of toilet paper yet? There's so many things that we could talk about. But it's so important that we, uh, we stay connected. And, uh, and the third thing is stay connected to His church. And uh, so there's ways you can do that. You can head to our website, uh, which is changepoint.co.nz. If you're not on our database or on our email list, then please sign up for that. Uh, if you aren't on the Facebook page or the community, Change Point community page, please uh, subscribe to that. Um, Make sure you subscribe to our YouTube videos and, and get the links for all our downloads. So anything that Pastor David puts up as far as a midweek teaching or, or Sunday services or whatever way you can stay connected to the church, it's just so important that it will just strengthen your faith in this time and keep us all connected. Because we're all one body, right? We're all part of Christ. And so uh, I really hope that you are encouraged today. Um, we're going to listen to some amazing worship. Make sure you stand up wherever you're at. And then from the worship, we're going to, um, Pastor Linda's going to bring the word and uh, I'll wrap it all up so you'll see me again later. Enjoy the service. There's nothing worth it. There's nothing worth more that will ever come close. No thing can compare because you're our living home. Your presence. And I've tasted and seen. And I've tasted and seen. Of the sweetest of love When my heart becomes free And my shame is undone In your presence Come on, Holy Spirit Holy Spirit, you are welcome here Come fly place and feel the atmosphere your glory God is what our hearts long for to be overcome by your presence Lord we want to be overcome come on and sing there's nothing worth more there's nothing worth more that will never come close. No 
nothing can compare your our living home It's your presence When oh, I'm tasting and seeing And I'm tasting and seeing Of the sweetest of loves When my heart becomes free And my shame is
so good With every breath that I am able Oh, I will sing of the goodness Yes, I will sing Cause your goodness is running after It's running after me Your goodness is running after It's running after me With my life laid down I surrender now I give you everything Goodness, your goodness is running out, it's running after me. Your goodness is running out, it's running after me. With my life laid down, I surrender now. I give you everything. Your goodness is running out, it's running after me. Your goodness. your goodness in these times everything that we have to be thankful for Lord we sing about it because goodness is not a feeling Lord it's who you are as a person and we praise you and we worship you thank you Lord Amen well this morning we're going to pass it off to Pastor Linda for the message. Take it away, Pastor Linda. Good morning. Thank you for coming with us in our home Sunday morning. And Michelle and Chris, thank you so much for leading us into worship. It's great to spend that time just reflecting and loving the presence of God. So we thank you for that. Um, God has surely been with us. And I know that as I look back over the last three weeks now, we've been in this amazing series called Not Just. And that first day where we were still able to be in our church building and David preached on just not a chair. And each chair represented an opportunity for God to meet with someone. And as we sit here in our lounges, it's no different. God is still here. And we have an opportunity as we sit in these chairs today, wherever you're at, whether you're close or far away, we welcome you to this opportunity for God to meet with us. And then the second week was outstanding because little did we know that we wouldn't even be able to be in our building. And, and our series title then was Not Just a Building. And uh, it was beautiful that uh, David shared about the boundaries and the powerful message and that we are the building of God. And as Andrew preached at the night, he said, um, we carry his presence and we facilitate what he generates. And how beautiful is that? And so here we are. Not in a building, but we are the building of God. Week three last week was not just a conversation. And we had Johnny Boom preaching and sharing with us the truths about Jesus and, and how he walked with us and how the conversation he had with each individual and how important it was. And Alyssa at night when she shared that in that conversation Jesus had, he's not shocked 
by us. He's not shocked in our circumstances, but he's right with us wanting to have a conversation. Today is week four, and the title of my message is, It's Just Not Another Day. And I'm so excited to share with this. So before I do, let's just pray. Father God, I thank you. I thank you that right here, right now, you're with us. And Father, as this even is being filmed, Lord, right now, to go into the various homes, God, we pray that you will present yourself with us. Holy Spirit, that you would come and you would meet us in our chairs, in our lounges, in our bedrooms. Father, uh, wherever we're watching, Lord, that this is an appointment that you have with us. And truly, God, it's not just another day. So we thank you for this time. Lord, be in this word, I pray. Amen. So I was thinking about uh, this week and, and what, how unique it has been. It's really been only five days since I've been in quarantine, and, and yet it seems a whole lot longer. And I bet some of you feel the same way. And I was thinking about that old movie. I think it was from 1993. It was Groundhog Day, and it was with uh, actor Bill Murray. And he played this character, he was, just, he was sarcastic, he was uh, egotistical, he was a weatherman. And he was asked to go and film whether this little groundhog was going to come up and show a shadow or not. And so he was in this little town in Pennsylvania. And every day he would wake up and it would be repeating the same day over and over again. And uh, each day was exactly the same. But yet he began to learn something in that day. And it was um, that as he evolved, uh, he learned the key of life, that it isn't what happens, it's how we react to it. And that's where we're at right now, is that things have happened, and it really is about how are we going to react to it. What is our circumstance, and where is God in it? And we have an opportunity today, because it's just not another day. Actually, some of us might feel a little bit like Bill Murray in that Groundhog Day. And so I trust that as we go through this sermon today and this message, that we would reflect and we would actually learn the importance of why we are where we're at right now. So if you'd like to turn with me uh, to Matthew uh, 21, it's uh, a great passage, and it's the triumphal entry of Jesus Christ because it was Palm Sunday. So that's what today actually is. So if we forgot about it, guess what? Today is Palm Sunday. And so we celebrate. It's a time of remembrance. It's a time of acknowledging the, the Holy Week begins today. So as we look forward to Good Friday and we look forward to Easter, what we're actually doing is we're preparing our hearts in this Holy Week. And so today is the first day for that. Um, in Matthew 21, 1 and 9, uh, we see that Jesus rode in on a donkey and he had told his disciples to go get this donkey and the colt. And as they did, um, they returned back to Jesus and they put cloaks on the donkeys and Jesus began to sit on the donkey and ride into Jerusalem. A great crowd gathered and, and obviously what had just happened prior was uh, Jesus raised Lazarus from the dead. And so a lot of people had heard about it. They'd been following him on the mountainside. They'd been journeying with him. He healed them. He fed them. He looked after them. And so there's this huge crowd that had began to gather. And as they saw Jesus coming in, riding on a donkey, they said these words, Hosanna to the son of David. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest heaven. Now, normally in our busy world, we are busy looking after our children at this time of the year. They're doing sports and activity. It might be the beginning of school holidays. And we're kind of rushing around and we're kind of not engaged in the fullness of what this week really means. And yet we find ourselves right here around the world, actually in our homes. We're actually in a time frame that could it be that God organized this for such a time as this? That actually we are in the right place at the right moment in time because God wants to talk to us. He wants to have that conversation. He wants us to sit in that chair. And he wants to realize is that he's building each one of us to be the building of God. So 
This is just not another day. This is an opportunity that he has given us. As we look at this um, lockdown, we can actually be faced with the terrible news of lost loved ones, which is horrible. We can look at lost jobs and opportunities, and that can be devastating. We can look at um, the inconvenience that this has brought on a whole society, actually the actual world. Or we can look at this, like I said, as an opportunity to meet with God an opportunity to come into what is called as the Passion Week or the Holy Week and spend a time just with God. This is just not another day. Today is when we stand along the roadside of our hearts and we proclaim, Hosanna, Hosanna, blessed is he who comes in the name of our Lord. Hosanna in the highest heaven. As we reflect and, and kind of look forward of, of what it might be like when um, Jesus was coming in on that donkey, there's a few things that he had done, is that it represents that he is victorious. God's word tells us that palm leaves uh, were cut down on branches and, and put into the roadside and cloaks and various things that he, the donkey traveled on. And I often wondered what those palm leaves meant. Was it just the fact that they just had these palm leaves and thought, oh, I'll cut those down? Or was there a certain meaning? And so as I studied, it's like the palm branches that they waved represented um, the goodness and the mercy of God, and it represented victory, and it was a symbol of the final victory of defeating death. So as they waved those palm branches, they were actually declaring victory, that Jesus was their victor. Now, of course, they thought he was going to save them from the Roman Empire, and yet he had a greater plan than just that. What about us? Is that Are we looking to our government to save us in this time? Are we looking to other situations to save us? Our hospitals, our doctors, nurses, our um, essential care workers, are we looking to them? Or could there be another plan that God has just for you and just for me? Number two, he is the Prince of Peace. Zechariah 9.9 9 says, Rejoice greatly, daughter of Zion. Shout, daughter of Jerusalem. See, your king comes to you righteous and victorious, lowly and riding on a donkey, on a colt, the foal of a donkey. As he came, he came with peace. And that's our highest prayer for each one of us during this season, is that you will receive the gift of peace that God wants to give you. That no matter what you're filled with, the anxiety or fear, is that the Prince of Peace has come, and he delivers peace to us. The third thing is when they shouted Hosanna, which means save us, free us, deliver us, they're actually crying out, our salvation is come. When the people shouted Hosanna, they said they were hailing Christ as King, Christ as Lord. It actually means save now. And though their own minds, they might have wanted an earthly king and thought they were, that Jesus was coming in an earthly manner. But God had a different way and a different plan. Psalm 118.26 says, Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Romans 10.9, one of our most favorite scriptures. If you confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord, and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. Number four, he is life. He is our life. Palm Sunday reminds us that the reign of Christ is far greater in the present day world. Actually, it's far greater than the present day world. His eternal world is upon us. Men look for someone to fight their battles in the present day world, yet God had the ultimate plan of sending his son to fight the final battle for us. This is the greatness of why we celebrate this week. Because of Christ's ultimate sacrifice, we can be set free from death. And I think today is that we have that in front of us looming when we, when we hear news reports every day of thousands of people dying, especially in other countries. And it can put a great degree of um, fear and apprehension upon us. But Jesus conquered death 
so that we might have life. And all it takes is believing in what he has done for us. John eleven twenty five 25 says, Jesus told her, I am the resurrection and the life. Anyone who believes in me will live even after dying. See, our great reward is Jesus himself. Our great reward when we die and pass from this earth is, is salvation. It's, it's like we're saved now. We're in the process of being saved, but we will be saved. And it's beautiful that God has a plan for us. We have so much to be grateful for this week. We have so much to be um, lifting up in praise to our God. He has given us the Sabbath. The Sabbath means a time of rest. It means a a drawing away from activities and and what we do and, and coming alongside Jesus and coming alongside our Heavenly Father, allowing the Holy Spirit to speak to us and bring healing and cleansing and wholeness. Could it be that... God waited for this moment in time so he could meet with us. Let's use this week and as we cease from these activities and call out Jesus Christ, our Savior, Hosanna in the highest. Let's choose to focus and worship our God. I love how when we come to prayer and praise and celebrating him, it brings a freedom in our life. And many of you may be watching this, you've experienced that freedom, but some of you haven't. You're thinking, well, I don't even know what that is, or I'm, I'm, I have anxiety right now, or I have depression right now. And this message is for you because God wants to free you from that. He said, I will save you. I will heal you. I will deliver you for I am salvation. Today is when we stand along the roadside of our heart and cry out, Hosanna, Hosanna in the highest. Thank you for being with us today, and let's just pray right now. Father, I thank you for this amazing opportunity to stand, Lord, in agreement one with the other. And Lord, we cry out, we're we're those people right now, and we're crying out, Hosanna, Hosanna. Save us. Come save us, Lord. And Lord, I pray that, Lord, for those that might be far from you right now, Lord, I pray that they will raise up their arms, raise up their hands and say, Hosanna, Hosanna, have mercy, save me. Lord, to those that need a refreshing of the Holy Spirit, come and dwell amongst us, O God. Fill us up, cleanse our heart, purify us, God. And Lord, may we focus on you, King Jesus, the one who lives and reigns, who once was, who now is, and for whoever, forever will be. Amen. Amen. I've asked uh, Chris and Michelle to come back and um, sing a final song uh, with us today called Hosanna. So as we worship God, may we cry out to him with our hearts and say, Hosanna, come. Amen. I see. I see the King of glory Coming on the clouds with fire The whole earth shakes The whole earth shakes I see His love I see His love and mercy Washing over all our sin The people say The people say Hosanna 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 in the highest Hosanna Generation, 
rising up to take their place with selfless faith with selfless faith I see a near revival I see a near revival stirring as we pray and see we're on our knees we're on our What a fantastic message, Pastor Linda. Thank you so much. And, and if you were watching and you, you felt like you needed to respond to Jesus this morning, you felt like you're in a place where you really need God to move in your life, um, I'm going to pray. And as I pray, I want you to, to agree with this prayer. And uh, if you want to give your heart to God, I recommend that you pray this prayer with me as well as you contact us through our website at changepoint.co.nz and we can get in contact with you and we can follow you up. And, um, and church, just a reminder as well that to stay connected with each other, continue to pray for each other, continue to contact each other, text each other, Facebook each other, Instagram each other, do whatever it takes to stay connected. Um, but I'm going to pray and uh, let's believe that God is going to move in our hearts this morning. Father God, I just thank you. Thank you for this amazing service that we've been able to, to have. Lord, thank you for technology. Thank you that uh, you're still able to move. And it doesn't matter where we are in the world, you're able to move in our hearts, in our circumstances, in our lives, Lord. I pray that you would keep every single person who is watching safe. And Lord, for those who've been watching and felt a stirring in their heart, Lord, that they need to get their lives right with you. Lord God, I pray, Lord, that you would uh, forgive them, Lord. I pray that you would lead them closer to you and they would respond to you right now. And Lord, I pray that they would just invite you into their hearts in Jesus' name. And I, Lord, I pray for every person who has been uh, affected by this um, virus that is going sweeping the world right now. Lord, I pray for those who have lost their jobs those who um, their income has dramatically increased, maybe they're, they have fallen ill to this. Lord God, I pray in Jesus' name, you would move mountains, Lord God. It says that you're our provider. It says that you provide everything that we need. And so Lord, in this time, I pray that we would all put our faith and our trust in you, Lord. In Jesus' name, amen. 
Well, God bless and uh, tune in to us next week, Sunday morning at 10 a.m. Also, check out tonight's service at 7 p.m. And we got uh, Hannah Angus, who's going to be bringing the word. So I encourage you to tune in at 7 p.m. tonight. God bless.